about Porter's Five Forces, some students will initially think that this is kind of a static model, that it doesn't change over time. But in fact, it can change dramatically over time. So we don't just analyze a market or a business with this model of Porter's Five Forces and decide that it's kind of set in stone. We have to realize that there are changes coming to every market and to every business that are going to affect how these forces operate. Now there's lots of different factors that influence how Porter's Five Forces operate, and I want to focus on just three of them that I think are critically important to understand. The first one is innovation. So technology innovation is happening more and more rapidly. So we are really living in an age of exponential technologies. So technologies seem to not only increase in quality at an exponential rate, increase in capability at an exponential rate, but also seem to be dispersed throughout the world at an increasing rate as well. So these exponential technologies put power in the hands of a lot of people. And as such, they can have a big effect on these forces. So one of the things that technology often does is it reduces the power of suppliers and brings new entrants into the marketplace. So it increases that threat of new entrants. Therefore, those suppliers have less power and they have more competition. There are lots of technologies that help with this. So cloud computing, that's one good example. If you think about things like Uber or Lyft, or these ride sharing or sharing application, um, sharing economy apps, well, they're usually powered by cloud computing. So that's been one thing that's been driving in uh, these new entrants and has been lowering the barriers to entry. Open source software, being able to quickly develop software, open source hardware, access to machine learning, natural language processing, very easy to do nowadays. It has been essentially democratized. So we can get into a different area about creative destruction or disruption where these new technologies are enabling new companies to come in and kind of blow up existing industries. And we see that in, indust in industry after industry. Classic examples include things like Kodak, uh, include things like blockbuster video versus streaming, movie theaters versus streaming. We could keep on going on and on about different innovations that have caused a big disruption in current industries, have lowered supplier power, have increased buyer power, and have increased threat of new entrants. So technology plays a big role here, and I think it will continue to play an increasing role. So the uh, next area I want to look at is government policies. Now we generally consider that the government should be taking on the role of leveling the playing field, so making sure it's fair for everybody. However, we often see existing suppliers, incumbent providers, if you will, using the government to increase barriers to entry okay, in order to not have that disruption. Let me give you an example with Tesla Motors. Tesla Motors is not only unique in the fact that they were the first to mass market or mass produce an electric car, but they also sell directly to the consumer. How do you buy a Tesla? Well, you either go into a showroom or you go online, build your Tesla, and it shows up at your doorstep. In other words, it disintermediates or bypasses the dealers. Well, how do you think the existing motor companies reacted? Well, they didn't just do the same. They said, well, wait a second. We're going to get the government to pass laws that say that you cannot sell a car without a dealership. And last I looked, there were about a dozen states which either had passed legislation or were about to pass legislation that said that you could not buy a car directly from a manufacturer. You had to go through a dealership. Same sort of thing going on with solar versus coal. If you actually listen to 
the way our lawmakers talk about things, you would think that cold jobs are very, very common. There's lots of people employed in your community in the coal industry. Well, I don't know about your community, but uh, there's not a coal mine for hundreds of miles from where I live. And in fact, we find out that there are about three times the number of people employed by the renewable energy uh, area or work in renewable energy than compared with fossil fuels. And what we have here is these incumbents, these suppliers, that are pushing back. They're saying, wait a second, no, we do not want these new entrants coming onto the market, so we're going to push back with everything we got. And one of the things they may have is the ability to influence legislation in a way that can help them, Okay, so that can put up some barriers to entry. So the last factor that I want to mention is one called ecosystem or network effects. A network effect is simply explained through something like social media. When you join a social media network, if you're the only one on that network, that network is not that valuable to you. But as that network grows and more and more of your colleagues and friends and people that you know are on that network, that network becomes of increasing value. And these network effects can do all sorts of things Porter's Five Forces. You can have, for example, a lot of information sharing, which is sometimes all that you need to kind of break the supplier's stranglehold on information and enable buyers to have a lot more power. Network effects also act as an accelerant for some of these other factors that we've talked about, such as innovation. Hopefully that helped you understand a little bit more about Porter's Five Forces, Thank you so much, my colleagues, for joining me here. And if you have a particular subject or concept that you'd like me to focus in on on an upcoming Studio Saturday, please let me know in the comments below, and I will do my best. Thanks, and have a great day.